Hey everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a 10-game slate for the NBA. We have a ton of injuries today. Big ol' slate like this also is going to be kind of crazy with all the injuries. Lots of value options, lots of everything. So let's go ahead and get into the team picks. I have Charlotte over the Spurs, Chicago over Indiana, Boston over Detroit, Knicks over Atlanta, Miami over Brooklyn, uh, Cleveland over Philly, uh, Oklahoma City over Houston, Memphis over Utah, Denver over Dallas, and the Pelicans over the Lakers. So uh, let's get into the injury report today. We have a massive one, like I said. For the Bulls, DeRozan, J uh, Javante Green, and Derek Jones are out. Caruso is questionable and Dragic is probable. For the Pacers, uh, Turner and Theus are both questionable. For the Spurs, McDermott is questionable. Trey Jones and Vassal are out. For the Hornets, Oubre is out. For the 76ers, Tucker is probable and Embiid is questionable. For the Knicks, Robinson is out. For the Hawks, uh, Collins is questionable and Hunter is probable. For the Pistons, Cunningham and Bagley are out. Uh, for the Celtics, uh, White is doubtful. Robert Williams is questionable. Horford is probable. Smart is doubtful. Muscala is questionable. And Brown is out. Uh, no word on Tatum if he'll likely play today. Uh, then we're going to look at uh, Duncan Robinson is questionable. Uh, for the Heat, uh, Hero is out. And Lowry is out. And Oladipo is out. For the Rockets, uh, Porter Jr. is out. For the Thunder, Pokoveski and Trey Mann is out. For the Jazz, Westbrook is out. For the Grizzlies, Adams is out. For the Mavericks, Wood and Hardaway Jr. and Bullock are all questionable, and Cleaver is out. For the Nuggets, Murray and Gordon are questionable. For the Pelicans, Zion is out, and McCollum is questionable. And for the Lakers, Davis is probable, and LeBron is questionable. So we have a ton of injuries today. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to wait and see about a lot of the guys on Boston, as well as a couple other teams. Uh, but with that said, I do have some guys I do like today, so let's go ahead and get through that here. We're going to start with some expensive players. We're going to start with LaMelo Ball. He's played really well lately. Uh, he's had a few games uh, where he didn't play well for a week or so ago, but he's finally getting going. In five of the last six games, he's been over 50 fantasy points, and San Antonio's not really even attempting to try to pretend like they're trying to win games right now, so I expect him to play well in this one. The big risk there is obviously blowout. Uh... Nikola Vucevic is also in a really good spot here with DeRozan out. He should have some more upside as a result of that, and his price is still pretty good at 9200 Uh He has double-doubles in nine straight games, and he has a nice matchup here against Indiana, who doesn't really play defense. Uh, then we're looking at Desmond Bain, who has played pretty solid, yet inconsistently throughout the season, but his price is pretty good right now, and he's uh, been three, over, three of the last four games over 40 fantasy points, so he looks like he's in a solid position. Uh, then we're going to look at Keldon Johnson uh, for the Spurs. He's played extremely well uh, the last few games, uh, though the Spurs obviously aren't trying to win, and his price continues to drop, surprisingly. So I'm pretty happy with his price being at where it is to give him some upside, though he does, you know, he doesn't have a very low floor or a very high ceiling, but he's a pretty uh, stable player for the price. Um, then we're going to look at P.J. Washington. Uh, now, he's kind of risky. He's been uh, inconsistent throughout the season, but since the trades, he's been pretty solid. He's been in over 32 fantasy points in four straight games uh, since all those trades happened. So I look for him to have some good upside here, with, especially considering the fact that his price is still pretty good. And he seems like he's gaining some consistency in usage now that there's some guys uh, moved out from that team. Uh, then we're going to look at Malcolm Brogdon, who is coming off an injury but did play yesterday and played really well uh, i expect him to have all the minutes he can handle today especially if tatum gets ruled out uh, with all the guys out it looks like he'll have a good opportunity but we do want to wait making sure that that injury report gets uh, figured out before we decide to roster him just depending on that situation uh, then we're going to look at Walk walker kessler for the utah jazz uh, despite being burned from him the last game uh, he has some pretty good upside here his floor is pretty low though keep that in mind but he has some nice upside, and he's played really well since uh, Vanderbilt got left, with the exception of the last game where he only played 19 minutes for some odd reason, even though he's playing great. Uh, Mark Williams for the Spurs, or sorry, for the Hornets, rather. Uh, his price has popped up some, which definitely makes him a little bit risky here, but uh, he still has some upside. Uh, he's been 32 and 28 out of, in two of the three games uh, for, the, for the Hornets, and they got a nice matchup today where... Uh, I don't think anybody on the Spurs is going to try to keep Charlotte from winning the game, so I expect him to have a good game. 
Um, then we're going to look at uh, Zach Collins. He's in a very similar situation to Mark Williams. They're actually playing each other. And uh, he seems a little bit safer, honestly, because his price is $200 cheaper. And he doesn't have a backup center that's kind of chomping on his bits. But overall, he still has some upside in this matchup. And I think he's viable on the slate. But he's a little risky, you know, just considering the size of the slate. And taking risks on centers that have only started three games so far this season is a little bit risky on both of their accounts. Uh, then we're going to look at Benedict Mathurian. And he's uh, started to show some cons consistency lately, which is a good sign. But he does have a, ho a low floor. But his he's also got a pretty good ceiling for the matchup, especially with guys out for Chicago. Uh, then we're going to look at Gabe Vincent, who looks like he's going to be the starter for Miami for a little while. Especially with Hero out, his ceiling gets higher. Uh, he hasn't been consistent, but he has been uh, pretty good and as a starter. So I do like him here, but he is a little bit risky. Um, then we're going to look at Sam Hauser. Now, this is dependent on the injury reports, obviously, holding true for the Celtics. But uh, he played really well yesterday, and I expect him to have the opportunity to do that again today if he starts. Uh, make sure he does start, though. Uh, then we're going to look at Devontae Graham. Uh, for the San Antonio Spurs. Obviously, the Spurs don't care about winning, but he has played well since he's joined the team. Uh, he's been over 26 fantasy points in all three games, and he's still $4,000. He is somewhat risky because you never know when that train might end, but uh, I still think he's in a good spot, and he has some nice upside in this matchup. Uh, we'll also have to see if he ends up getting a start at some point. Uh, Mike Mascala also looks really interesting for Boston. Uh, you could also just like input pretty much any of these other you know big guys for the Celtics uh, when it comes to the injury situation there, like Blake Griffin, depending on who starts. Uh, but uh, if Mascala was to start, he would be a cheap pump play. Not obviously a play you typically want to build your lineup around, but he has some upside as a result of the situation. With that said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get over to FanDuel. Um, let's uh, check out my top pick over here is Shea Alexander. Uh, I really think he's a little bit cheaper here on FanDuel than DraftKings, and he has nice upside, but his floor is in the mid-40s, if not the low-40s, and he's been hitting that a little bit more lately. But I think he has nice upside in this matchup for against Houston, who really won't try to stop him at all, and he'll kind of go balls to the wall. Uh, LaMelo Ball also too cheap over here on FanDuel for his potential. Um, he has actually played really well lately. Uh, a, bite, a little bit inconsistent, but he had a good, uh, he had a really rough stretch for a few games, but he seems like he's back on track and he's playing well and his price is pretty reasonable. Uh, then we'll look at Tyrese Halliburton for his, uh, for Indiana. Uh, he finally broke out of his slump since he's come back from injury and I look for him to continue to do that. His price is still too low for his potential here. Uh, Nikola Vucevic also looks great today for the Bulls against Indiana. He should have an opportunity to big game here. He's played really well lately, uh, though a little bit inconsistent, but he's had double-doubles in quite a few games in a row, so I look for him to continue that streak, and his price is still pretty good. Uh, Larry uh, Markinen is somebody I like here on FanDuel. Uh, he has priced a little bit too cheap for what his potential is, and he's played really well since all the trades and stuff went down, so I look for him to continue that, though it is a little bit of a tough matchup. Uh, Zach Levine also looks interesting today for the Bulls. He's had some nice upside as a result of DeRozan being out, and he's been playing pretty well. And his price is just too cheap here on FanDuel for what he can do. Uh, Mark Williams is a very risky play for Chicago or for the Charlotte Hornets rather in this matchup against the Spurs, just because he has uh, he does have the upside to make it work, but he's still risky uh, just because Nick Richards is chomping behind him. Um, then Malcolm Brogdon, if he was to play again today and have, you know, a good role then and play, you know, max minutes, if all these guys end up being rolled out, then he would definitely be in play today on FanDuel. But you do want to make sure that most of those guys are rolled out before you utilize them today. Uh, then we're going to look at Gordon Hayward for the uh, Hornets, who seems like he's just playing pretty well. And his role is, seems a little bit more consistent now uh, that uh, all these trades have happened for the Hornets. So I look for him to continue that. Uh, Benedict Mathurian also looks interesting today, though he is a little bit risky. He has been kind of streaky throughout the season. He had some very low floor, but he's been playing well the last few games, so I look for him to continue that. And then Sam Hauser, uh, if he ends up starting again, then he'll be somebody to consider as a cheap option here on FanDuel. Overall, I think this slate is pretty good, uh, despite the fact there's tons of injuries. There's good quality amount of expensive players and cheaper players, so... I think you can build some quality lineups. I could I could see scoring being extremely high again today, 
which we've seen a lot lately, but uh, hopefully it's a good slate, and hopefully all this injury stuff gets figured out before the slate uh, starts. So thank you guys for liking, comment, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and have a nice day, guys.